Welcome back, it's Melanie, your She Shed Scrapper. So today I am back with a one-page layout uh, using Cabin Fever by Photo Play. That's the majority of the papers I'm gonna be using and the embellishments. Um, I am also using a s'mores, I'm gonna make a s'mores shaker pocket and that's what I'm working on right here. I just went into my Cricut app and searched up s'more, um, found one that was open in the middle so that I could make it a shaker pocket and decided to use this kind of wood grain paper as my graham cracker. So I am just backing the top and the bottom for the graham cracker. Uh, the color just worked really nice. So once I get that done, I am then going to cut a piece of um, acetate to the size of the middle um, and glue that down. I need that so that I can then add my shaker stuff to the middle there. So once I get the acetate, I am also going to need to use some thin foam tape. And again, I'm getting kind of getting ahead of myself. Um, but the thin foam tape that I get is from Amazon. I will link that down below as well. And you wanna make sure when you do a shaker pocket that the foam tape goes all the way around the edge, that there's no openings because you don't want whatever you put in there, sequins or these shaker bits, you don't want them to have a way to escape. So just make sure that the tape goes all the way around. So this is the thin tape that I get off of Amazon. Um, I have to thank one of my viewers for suggesting it. It has been working wonderful for shakers or popping, you know, those thin pieces up on foam tape. So really enjoyed that. The shaker bits I am going to use are from Tall Mouse. I got this when I went to the Stamp and Scrapbook Expo in Orlando in May. This is adorable. They're like little clay pieces and there's marshmallows and graham crackers and little fires and just so fun. So I knew I needed to make a shaker pocket um, with this for this layout. I'm going to have two pictures of my youngest eating s'mores and yeah, just knew when I saw the um, shaker bits at the expo that I needed them. They are just adorable. I do have a haul video from that stamp and scrapbook expo. I'll try to link it up above for you guys um, if you want to check that out. It was my first time going to a scrapbook expo and I loved it. It was so much fun and was actually surprised at the deals that they had Um I thought, you know, things would be regular priced or whatnot, but they did have sales and really good sales too. So definitely check that video out if that's something that you are interested in going to. I am going to back my layout um, and I'm going to use that diagonal stripe paper for the overall border. Uh, but then I did want a separating border between the white uh, kind of base paper and the um, diagonal stripe. So this happened to be one of the papers in the collection as well. And it was a solid color and it was the perfect kind of, I don't know, muted color, I guess you could say for that separation. And I obviously didn't want to waste that paper. So I did end up gutting that paper as well. I did this, I don't remember which layout I think it was actually that 4th of July layout. I did this as well, where I kind of did the two borders and gutted both of them because I wanted to make sure I had the, the papers for other layouts. So once I get that done, I'll put the uh, kind of the white background paper down and the layout comes together pretty quickly. Now that that shaker pocket is done, um, it's, yeah pretty simple layout. So I do kind of struggle with maybe the placement of the shaker pocket and some embellishments at first. I kind of wanted to include a tent. Um, I thought it would be, I mean, we went, we were camping, so I thought that would be a fun, you know, embellishment to use, but I didn't know where I wanted to put it. Um, and then I knew that I also wanted a base for my pictures. And so I went into uh, the collection again and found this kind of reddish paper 
and it has phrases and it's all about phrases. The collection is based on when we were all quarantined at home, like March through, I guess, September of 2020. Um, so there's phrases about getting outside and camping and staying safe. And these photos are actually from that summer of 2020. Um, the first time I felt normal that summer. Um, just being able to do something that we usually do as a family uh, without really worrying about COVID. I just remember feeling free, I guess. Um, during this camping trip. So I figured that paper on the bottom was perfect um, with the little sayings that it um, included. So I'm just gonna add that to the bottom so that the photos have some place to rest. Uh, and then kind of just try to figure out what to do with the shaker pocket and the tent. Uh, it kind of, I don't know, I kind of wanted a title. I just was not sure really <laughs> how to embellish the layout. I like the base idea, I guess, that you see right here. Um, and so it just took me a minute to try to figure out what to, I guess, what to put on the layout. Um, like I said, I wanted a title, so I did go into my stash and find a couple of alphas. And I decided since the photo on the right-hand side of the page is shorter, that I would naturally, I guess, put the title at the top um, right there above it. And I really did like how I had the um, photos kind of crooked. However, I struggle with that when I want to add something to the top of it, like the title especially. Do I keep the title straight even though the photo's crooked or do I put the title at the angle of the photo? I would love your opinions on that because I that is something I struggle with kind of knowing what looks best. So I decided to, I didn't like just all the white space, so I decided to go into my stash again and I have these um, stickers. They're actually from a fall hip kit club, um, but they're clear kind of mixed media looking stickers and I love that. So I added a couple up there with the light colors of that striped paper. I loved how that just brought in some of the different colors as well. So I really liked that green font for the lovin, but didn't like that aqua that I had pulled out. So instead I went back to my stash and found this wood grain alpha and I like this so much better I think than I would have liked the teal. So my title is going to be S'more Lovin'. I wish that I had a Oh, I can't think of what it is, but the little thing to go at the end of loving, but, uh, and I could probably go cut one off of a letter that I'm not going to use. Maybe I will. Um, that little thing that's between the S and the M and s'more. I can't think of what that is called. I apologize. So <laughs> I want, I kind of want one for the, uh, green, I think, but now it was kind of trying to figure out how to embellish the rest of the layout. Um, obviously, I knew kind of that my s'more was going to be at the bottom, um, kind of covering up the middle of the photos there. And I guess that it was off camera that I did this, but I did kind of blend the outside of the s'mores with, I think it's the brushed corduroy Distress Oxide. Um, I just didn't like how it was so stark white, and the bottom of that s'more is going to be on white paper. So I wanted it to stand out a little bit more. So I did end up going ahead and adding some color around the edges of that s'more. I did remember I have some flares from Scrap and Happy Studio that are s'mores and camping. So I am going to try and include a couple of those um, on this layout. And then the ephemera pack for the Cabin Fever collection, has, it has a couple of uh, frames and so I decided to layer those frames at the top left to fill that space in and then kind of use that as a base for a cluster which I'm gonna be honest I kind of struggled with the cluster at the top as well I add to it and then take away and really try to kind of figure that one out so here are a couple of the s'mores um 
flares from Scrap and Happy Studio. I decided to add the fire one down to the s'mores and keep the s'mores one kind of away from the giant s'more at the bottom. Um, and again, I didn't have to use two, but I think these are adorable. I have more s'more photos, of course. I have s'more photos. Ha. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, that would be something my dad would say. Dad joke. Um, so now just kind of trying to figure out what else to add? I have a lot of outdoor collections that include camping and s'mores and hiking. And so I just, there's so many options that I have that I kind of struggled with trying to narrow down what I wanted to use. So I initially, I think down at the bottom, want, thought about using a circular like compass sticker um, underneath that fire flare. Just decided that was too much. Um, almost lopsided, I think, is why I decided not to. It was going to be too heavy on that right side of the s'more. It wasn't going to be even. And that's just how my brain works. So I did add a couple stars to fill in that white space at the top right. Um, I had a tab uh, with those frames at the top, but didn't love how that looked. So I added, I finally got a tent on the layout, added that to the top there underneath that s'mores flare and then add some stars uh, to the rest of the clusters as well. Um, but again, I wanted to kind of even out the bottom cluster. I didn't want it heavy on one side and I guess kind of lighter on the other. So what I ended up doing was adding another one of those um, clear stickers from the Hip Kit Club uh, collection and adding that to the bottom and using that kind of it now as a base for some fray stickers. Um, so it does still kind of look a little bit heavier on the left side, but I feel like at least now there's embellishments on each side and it makes me feel better at least. So check out those cute flares from Scrap and Happy Studio. They are just adorable. And then there's those shaker bits. I don't know if Tall Mouse has an online store. If they do, then I will link it down below. Um, but I hope you guys enjoyed this layout and I will link whatever I can find down below for you if you are interested. We will see you next time. Bye guys.